Mr. Mr. Johnson. My name is Tyrone. Um, I'm 22 years old. And it's a shame to say that the reason that I'm here, though, is I represent one of a small percentage of today's youth that don't smoke, don't drink, never did drugs, never did jail time. And that's a horrible thing to see because we live in a generation where that stuff is influenced. Where if you've done that stuff, then you know what life is. And one of the things I got into was performing spoken word. Spoken word became an avenue for me, not only to not do those things, but it gave my mind something to focus on to be sure that I stayed away from those negative influences. And that's what is lacking in today's time, not only our youth, but you know, some of our elders as well, is that we have to start teaching our children and our youth to give something else your focus. Instead of the media, give them something they you know, focus on. Help them develop their talent or creativity, whether that be poetry, you know, sewing, whatever the case may be. So what I'm going to do for you really quickly is um, freestyle some spoken word because as you heard, I performed events for Miss Goodness. So I'm going to give you a little sample of what I do and I'll dedicate it to the cause are you. and what my mother used to call the idiot box. Let's take a look what's inside. Mm. You see the glamour, you see the glitz, and you see the pimped out rides, and you see everyone looking fine and glassy and all kinds of flashy, but is the homework done? You have two plus two equals me being number one, but I'm not worried about being able to read and write because I know that somehow these hip hop videos told me I'll be all right. Oh, mm -hmm. all I need to know is rhyme and with a couple of swearing words, and all I need to do is strip down my bare bottom, and I don't have to worry about stomping on birds. In fact, I'll use that. Yes, I love to destroy things. I love to make sing songs about how my whole life was wrong, and all I really did was mess up my only opportunity to get it right. So. Never mind that, because who needs to go out of read when I know how to ball up my fist and fight? Yeah, it's so easy. Knock me down. Go ahead. I'll just get right back up. You know why? Because I heard celebrity say that life is that messed up. But let me tell you something. When you look at that celebrity life, ask yourself a question. What is your face? Do you even know? You see, at the end of the day, when the TV goes off and you're laying in your bed at night, it's just you. Whatever color skin you're wearing, whatever color skin you're in, does it really matter to you? Because I tell you, at the end of the day, you're not going to get the pin. Those shows you watch about smoking because of cancer or incarceration are no imagination. They are for real. But never mind, right? Because you already know the deal. All I have to do is make a hit record, make those big sales. Who cares if my ego's decides to go well, right? Who cares if I'm right down my, by my own ignorance, right? Dad was never around, so that's a good excuse to beat on women. Mom acted crazy, so that's an excuse to forgive, but never be forgiven, right? No one was around to lead me, so you know what? It's everyone else's fault but mine. Man, I wish I could show you how wrong you were, but it looks like we ain't got the time. So I'm going to tell you right here and now, I might be the last percentage of youth. I'm not the fountain of youth, but I am a perfect example because, see, for me, even though I have CP, I stand before you ample, humble, and holy, ready and willing, ready and able. But you wouldn't really want to listen to that because now we've disguised the fable as truth. I'm telling you, y'all, we got to get it together for our youth, and not just the kids, but the parents as well. See, we got to stop sitting back talking about what happened back in my day when everything was A-OK -okay because we know it wasn't. You talk about all we sing songs about the physical temptations and everything is about the physical touching, but do I remember a certain singer called Teddy Pendergrass that had you all blushing? Yes, I do. I remember very well. In fact, I remember plenty of groups that had matching outfits that made your cheeks just swell with this envy and this lust and everything that lists all the above. So why do we keep having this generation a little difference? And we keep calling it love, no, we're starving ourselves because we forgot who we are as an equal, who we are as a sex, who we are as a community. What we call ourselves, warrior, I can do that all by myself. I don't care if there's no set of unity. 
We lack in values, we lack in morals, we lack in discipline. But who cares because I see the celebrities living life on these cooking shows and man do they look so fine. Do you realize that those media shows are actually robbing us blind as people, as equals? They carry us around in the couch like our superheroes. Yet we all turn around talking about we know what the warriors would do. No, we don't, because we indeed took the ancestors places they've never believed. They've never believed that we'd become a people that would destroy themselves, take pride in destroying themselves. Yes, I make my ancestors proud. I tell you, I make my ancestors proud. How are you making them proud and you use a whole different terminology? Loud as you're raising your voice. Now it's something you put in a little bag and smoke in your pocket. Knowledge is power, and now all we know how to do is shoot random things off of rockets. And it's cool that we explore other planets and we try to connect, but whatever happened to a family being a union? As my mother used to say, how soon we forget. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but we're going to deal with the UNIA and ATL Buffalo Division. Uh, first of all, just a little introduction to you know who I am. My name is Lion Blythe. Um, I I'm here representing uh, UNIA ACL Buffalo Division Number 433. Um, but my history is dealing with at-risk youth. For about 20 years, I ran a community center. The community, a lot of people may know by my last name. You don't have to bring it up. But um, we dealt with over 300 plus children, graduating them from high school. Dealing with, again, at-risk children. We had 12 at-risk factors that we dealt with, usually dealing with uh, drugs and uh, single family, single parent families and things of that nature. Uh, we have a lot of success stories. Um, when I listen to the program so far this evening, we're not really looking at certain things. Okay, when we ask what is the alternative to the school to prison pipeline, we know. She's sitting right here. That's right. right. So she already laid the blueprint. Okay, so now the question becomes, if she's been doing it for 30 years, what are we doing? Yeah. Where is the support for her and people like her? For real. While we sit in the audience and we clap, what are we doing? When we lead these events, what are we doing? So again, I represent the Buffalo UNI ACL. When you look at these colors here, the honorable Marcus, we got Isaiah Gary who gave us the red, black, and the green. It gives us a nation of it. The issue that we have here is identity and lack thereof. And what are our children identifying with? Mm. Right? So now, when we look at history, we look at Honorable Marcus and Zaya Gary and what he gave us. He gave us nation of something to identify with. He gave us the flag. He gave us the national anthem. He gave us the Constitution. He gave us the Declaration of Rights. We also had a public display, I mean, a public declaration of uh, citizenship in uh, Madison Square Garden in 1920. Okay, those are five things you need to create a nation. If our children have no, it, let me rewind. There was a song called "Every Race Has a Flag of the Cool." It, it, just real quick, show of hands. Anybody ever heard that song? Okay. Now, when we talk about every race has a flag of the cool, who are they talking about? Uh, so now, what is the response to that? Now, a lot of our children, a lot of our people don't even know about this. But reality says to our children right now, do they know that that's their flag? If they didn't go, I just met a young man a week ago. It's funny, I'm seeing you today. I just met a man a week ago, and as I asked him, did he know about Marcus Garvey? He said, yeah. I wrote a, a, a paper on him in high school. I said, Where, who was your teacher? Like, even Thorne or something? He's like, yeah. <laughs> now, that's sweet, and that's funny, right? But that's a problem. Why is she the only one doing it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Where are we at? You know what I'm saying? So now we have the question, what is the alternative? The alternative is that we do something about it. We create our own organizations. Again, we look back to the honorable Martin Zagar. He gave us the UNIAC of the world. Okay? The plan is there. We have people like Sister Eagle Doyle. She late is here. Right? Like the sister said, all she has to do is set up the, the class. Teach teaching. Right? One of, my mother is Elaine Black. Okay, a lot of you might know her. She dealing with uh, her whole thing was children. Her main thing that made her the craziest was the teachers in the school ain't necessarily prepared to teach the children. That's true. So how are we going to expect something from the students if they learn from people who don't know? That's right. Thank you. So then, now, 
it's, it's our responsibility to now figure out, like Brother Hakeem goes in and uh, to Chantel go into these organizations and find out, like, what are you all doing here? What is this meeting about? You know, we need more of that. You understand? We need networking and unification. When we talk about, when I walked in, I missed the presentation earlier, right? But I think I can guess what it was about. When the Maafa happened, the Maafa was a great tragedy, our Holocaust, right? When that happened, we were stripped of certain things. We were stripped of certain family values and cultures and things of that nature. But that's what we're missing now. So it's not like we don't know what the problem is. We just have to get back to traditional African culture, right? And we keep using the term African because that's what we are, okay? Once we realize that and we move as a nation, some of these issues wouldn't even be a discussion. If the family structure is already set up, you know what I mean? If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're taking care of your business, right? If you're teaching your mind sitting right here, right now, right? All of us should have our children at these events. I know some of us are elderly and got older children, you know what I'm saying? But that's what this is about. It's all about family inclusion. Our parents need to be talking with the children, with the teachers, and it should be all one thing. And my personal view is we need to have our own schools, period. Period. <laughs> What Sister Doyle says, she says she's passing the torch to Chantel Habib. Is our, I'm going to request you guys that y'all set up that teacher class. Okay, we have just set, had a meeting. I don't know if you guys know who Dr. Ben is or Dr. Clark is. Okay, Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark, super historians as far as what we need to know. Let's put it like that. Okay, Sister Doyle brought uh, Booker T. Coleman up here recently. Booker T. Coleman represents the organization that Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark uh, did research for. ASCAP is the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilizations. Now just listen to the title of that. How many of our children even know that that organization exists? The Association for the Study of Classical African Civilizations. That's what we need to be studying. Yeah. Okay? So what I'm suggesting to you um, is not only do we need to continue to uh, push for change inside the school system, but we need to try and figure out our own system. Yeah. Okay? Shortly, how you doing, beautiful? <laughs> this, see, this is what I'm saying. Y'all turn around, looking beautiful little people. Back here. This is what we're talking about. <laughs> Listen, once you know something, another prime example. I'm gonna keep coming back to Sister Doyle. Once you know something, it's your responsibility to teach it. If then you know that, and I see a lot of people shaking their heads. If you know it's your responsibility to teach it, and you go to teach it, and the student don't learn, who fault is that? Mm, not the student. You know it's your responsibility to teach. So if your student is failing, you are failing. That's you right. Are failing. <laughs> now, I'm going to, to slow down and I'll, I'll get off the uh, podium. I'll take questions if you have any. But again, I represent the UNI ACL of the world. We are our own government. We are making sure our people are together. We are just recently, Black History Month this year, made Black History by creating a chapter here in Buffalo. We'll be moving forward as such. We will be networking, networking with everything that's positive for our people. Understand that that is a must. Unification is a must. We have to uplift. Marcus Martin Mazzaiagari lets us know. Up, race. Yeah. That's what you want. Ashe. 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 Ashe.